How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another leak code question. Today our question is called Valid Mountain Array and it's a question that's currently being asked by Google. Alright guys, so today we're going over a question called Valid Mountain Array. Again, it's being asked by Google right now and our problem description says, given an array A of integers return true if and only if it is a valid mountain array. And it tells us to obviously recall uh, that a valid, that recall that A is a mountain array if and only if, it tells us one, that A's length is greater than or equal to three, and the second criteria is that there exists some I between zero and A's length such that A zero is less than A one, so on and so forth. So this is just saying that there's an increase, right? There's an increasing sequence, and then this one similarly is saying AI is greater than AI plus one, meaning that there's a decreasing sequence. Okay, so two criteria, right? It has to be greater than or equal to three in terms of its length, and then it also has to have an increasing sequence and a decreasing sequence. I guess that's why they're calling it a valid mountain array. Okay, so now let's walk through our examples. If we're given this input here, two and one, we'd return false, right? Because it just looks like this, it just looks down. And that's not a valid mountain array, right? So pretty simple, it's just decreasing. We don't have an increasing and then a decreasing sequence, so we'd return false. Uh, very similar, for example, two, we have three, five, five. So it's the same idea, but the opposite, right? It's only increasing, we have no decrease. So again, it's false, it's not a valid mountain array. And then finally, for example, three, we have zero, three, two, one. So we have zero is less than three, so that's our increase. And then three is less than two, and two is also less than one. So we successfully have our increase and our decrease, and our array is greater than or equal to length three. So we'd return true. Awesome, and then they gave us a couple notes. Uh, A's length is between zero and 10,000, and AI, or the values in the array, are gonna be between zero and 10,000 as well. Okay, so hopefully kind of walking through those examples gives you an idea in, what, in terms of like what we need to do, but essentially we just need to first confirm that we have some sort of increase, and then we have some sort of decrease following our increase. So let's just focus on the increase part, right? How can we figure out if there's an increase? Well, an increase is just saying that the elements are growing in value, right? So a really easy way to do that is we could take two pointers, compare two elements that are next to each other, and make sure that the, the pointer that's ahead of the other pointer is always higher, right? It always has a higher value than the pointer behind it. So we could have two pointers and just confirm that we see that increase. And once we don't see that increase anymore, we need to ensure that we have a decrease. So let's first handle just finding that increase. And again, we're gonna use those two pointers to do that and we can do the same for the decrease. So let's have our pointers, so int i equals zero. In this, ca this case, I'm not actually de gonna declare another variable, I'm just gonna use i again. We're gonna say while well, i is less than a dot length, right? So while we haven't gone through all the elements and i plus one is less than a dot length, right? So while we have two elements, that's really what this is saying, while we have two elements to compare, and AI is less than AI plus one, right? So while we have two pointers or two elements to compare and the I plus one element is greater than the I, A of I element, right? The ith element is less than the I plus one element. We want to increase I. So now when this loop breaks, we either have gone through all the elements or we've stopped whenever we found a decrease, right? Whenever A of I plus one was not less than A of I. So, now this brings us to our interesting case, right? So let's think about example two here. It's possible that our array is strictly increasing and never decreasing, so we wanna check a couple edge cases here, right? And the two edge cases we can really check is one, what we just said, maybe it's only increasing, or the other one is maybe it was never increasing, right? If it just starts decreasing from the beginning, i is never gonna be incremented. So if i is equal to zero, meaning we never had an increasing sequence, or i plus one is greater than or equal to a dot length, essentially just meaning we've gotten to the end of the array and it's always been uh, increasing, right? We have no elements left for a decreasing sequence. We could just return false right here. And otherwise, now we've actually uh, confirmed that we had an increasing sequence. Now we definitely have some sort of decreasing sequence. So now we just ensure, have to ensure that it's entirely decreasing the entire time. So to do that, we're gonna use the same approach. We're just gonna use i again, because it's, right, it's actually at the point where it begins decreasing, so that's super helpful. So while i is less than a dot length, and i plus one is less than a dot length, and again, this really is just saying in English, when we have two elements that we can compare, let's compare them. 
Uh, and so while we have those two elements, we just want to check and validate that they are decreasing. So if, what's the case that we know is a problem? Well, that's if a of i is less than or equal to a of i plus one, right? So if the previous thing is less than or equal to the next thing, then it's not strictly decreasing, so we have a problem, so we could return false. And then just so we don't get stuck in an infinite loop here, right, we want to add one to i every single time. Um, and so now that's going to confirm that all the other elements after increasing sequence are decreasing. And so if we never return false here, saying that we don't have a strictly decreasing sequence, and if we never return false here, that means that we've actually validated our entire array, so we do have a valid mountain array. So we can just return true. So now let's quickly talk about our run times. Our run times are pretty simple, right? We're only walking through this entire array A once. We're just using our pointer to move to a certain point and then moving through the rest of the array. So that's O of N, right? The run time's O of N where A, sorry, where N is just the number of elements inside of A. And then our space complexity is constant, right? We're really only declaring a pointer I here. We're not using any extra memory. Um, so the extra memory is really just constant. So let's run this code and make sure that it works. Because for some reason I said the right thing and then I typed the wrong thing. <laughs> if we get through all the elements, we want to return true. Sorry. So let's run this code again and make sure that works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve valid mountain array in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Google. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Kiss me.